They were dancing at the crossroads, Caribbean style, in Clare this afternoon. The Bannermen and the Black Irish, as many Montserratians believe themselves to be. They came to highlight the devastation wreaked on their island home by one of the world's worst volcanic eruptions and to thank groups like the Irish League of Credit Unions for their support in rebuilding Montserrat. Without being solicited, they gave one, over 100,000 US dollars to the credit union in Montserrat. And that may seem small to you, but it was of a great help. It is equivalent to millions of dollars to us. Michael D. Higgins, who's played a leading role in unearthing the links between Montserrat and Ireland, believes Irish people should play a more active role in helping the reconstruction of the Caribbean's Emerald Isle. You would need to have a heart of stone to suggest that they wouldn't want it to recover, and we would need to have hearts of stone uh, not to think that we would want to be part of reconstructing the new millennium's relationship with the Caribbean. On Montserrat, St. Patrick's Day is the national holiday. Names like Blake, Kerwin and Lynch are commonplace, and 17th century Irish settlers call their villages Cork, Galway and Kinsale. And today it really didn't feel all that far from Clare to there. Jim Fahey, RT News, Fecal. But the, uh, the, the, then after that, it kind of, the next time it was 95, and I actually started trying to keep the interest in the market. the Irish men do it, would come out of the Of course, I don't think they are. There's a great row for them. No, no, the ones that came from St. Kitts in the 60s. Yeah. And then, of course, Rudy went up to open up this um, Galway line. line. And he turned actually to page 20. And there you were, a large line. Because I've watched the video so many times yeah. to get the historical information. Yeah. So I can actually yeah. recognise it yeah. straight away. Yeah. I, I was thinking that it would be presented at We do it. I'm very anxious to have the tools. And George Irish left the island. Yes, he's in the room. Where is he now? Um, the University New York. In New York University. Yeah. Of your film, if you do it now. Um, is that yeah. it will become a historical document yeah. because in the fullness of time yeah. I believe the places that have been developed. Right, this is the map. That's one of the ladies that you interviewed. I remember you. Yes, 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 I <laughs> so we were so excited that we had somebody that didn't talk to actually coming and this is just very, very good. The old man, the older man. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm a pulling car. Let me come this way. I just want to introduce you to Mr. Hiddings. Please come all the way from the USA. Oh, how are you? Yes. Fenton. Yes. 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 Now, there's a very, very... Uh, uh, that actually is a County Clare name. A what name? County Clare. Very well now. Yes. County Clare. Yes, yes. Ireland's most... Very well now. The, the oh, champion oh, jockey who oh. enjoys the name of Fenton. Oh. Oh. He born in uh, England's moment. Okay, well, very controversial circumstances. <laughs> Have you found Irish names in any of the other islands? Like the, the, yeah, the one the play, I was looking at it. I had I had some of the material in the meeting. They they sent these things on the amount of slaves that they needed, and they 
the state monopoly, which was the Guinea company at the time, wasn't bringing them enough, so they used private companies. Mm -hmm. So if we're actually looking for records from whether people came through the state slave company, or the, which was the British company, or whether they came through private companies, there were Barbados records. The debate then on conditions was in the Barbados thing as well, but also after 1651, the first big rush of, of indentured people, and the argument about the conditions mm -hmm. in which are in those records. So that was not where where we began, you see. And I, if I, I wasn't, uh, I came into the project shortly after it had begun, and I was really trying to straighten it out historically. I would have started it if I was designing it myself. It was just the logical. Richard Legon's work is the the decision about there's even Jamaica material in there, mm -hmm. and why people went to one one island rather than the other. I think there's uh, an, an Irish anthropologist. John Messenger. John yeah. Messenger. I think yeah, Me Messenger, uh, Messenger published his work on Montserrat in the 1960s. He's mm. among the first. Yeah. And he, he publishes it in uh, about 1965. Yeah. Uh, John C. and Betty Messenger. There's a husband and wife team. Yeah. But I think that they are, they, they, it's they that gave the most credence to the connection between uh, goat stew and Irish stew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's more goat stew. There's more pepper in goat stew, I can tell you. The <laughs> there are the improved upon it. <laughs> the other side with which they didn't have is, is that uh, is that they had they didn't have Davis Root. Yeah. Remember, I remember Davis Root, which is the the natural uh, uh, antecedent of Viagra. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but we do have Davis Root. Yes, of course, that's what I'm saying. I remember going to I remember going to uh, going to this place uh, when I was there in eighty five, eighty six. I took I think I did the whole thing in about fifteen days, but I took uh, two or three days off to go and visit different places and that. I remember you, going you to found the Davis roads here yes, better than no, no, I found it there, no, 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 Michael D. Higgins, would you share your thoughts for us? Yeah. Uh, on the importance of today's uh, event here in Paris. <coughs> I, I think first of all that it's wonderful that the chief minister and so many people who are interested in the island of Montserrat have been able to visit Ireland and resume a connection that I frankly feel has been neglected. Uh, that they are here uh, uh, at this time is very important because I think we should all be involved in constructing a, a new opportunity and a new relationship after the horrific volcano which uh, is really at its worst in 1997 and 12 years before that the Montserratian people took on a, a Hurricane Hugo and struggled with it and sought to stay on their island but the Irish connection with the island goes back to Whatever way they, 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 it is debated, it goes back to 1631, when because of religious differences, Irish people left St. Kitts and went to Montserrat. And there are other sides to it which are more controversial, which I think, and that is that it's clear to me anyway, and I'm relying very much on work that Aubrey Gwynn is at the middle of, which he published in 1947, that there were estates there in the tobacco period and that the trade was in salt, meat and tobacco, but then with sugar everything changed and it changed particularly insofar as that on the island of Montserrat you had 10,000 slaves and I remember when we went looking uh, to trace the Irish connection I felt it would be wrong uh, to be looking for Irish names when I was walking um, the graves of t 10,000 slaves who had no grave or no mark and I feel that period of the transition from tobacco to sugar that brought slavery in. The Irish were already there at that period. Certainly Blake's estate was, Kerwin's estate was, uh, all of these in the neighbouring islands of Navis and this is certainly true as well. So then you come, I think it is in 1769, I have to my notes that you have the slaves revolt in 17 in, in, on St. Patrick's Day uh, in which uh, uh, skin colour was more important than, uh, than class in a way and uh, that many of the slaves were massacred as a result. So we have a strange relationship. I think that some of the Irish were there as estate owners. Then there were a group of Irish people who very clearly were moved to Barbados, particularly after the fall of Galway in 1651 and Cromwell's siege. And they were indentured servants with crafts and trades, and they're scattered throughout the Caribbean. 
So I think that the word that you would find in the folk history of Montserrat is beautiful. I couldn't describe it sufficiently as a sufficiently lovely, luxurious uh, island with an old name, if I remember, Ali Orwana, which is sorry, be a far, far beautiful name, the name given it by the Carib people before Columbus put his eye on it in his second voyage. I often thought the Indians must be thinking about it, the sun going by, and hoping you would keep going. But they, uh, they, they it, it's, a, it's a very beautiful island. So our re relationship it was, therefore, of the tradition that there was of the second son of merchant families in Ireland who had penalties on investment, settling the second son in the Caribbean going from the tobacco period into sugar, then there is, a, at that particular stage, the rest of the Irish who are indentured servants come. Now, in relation to the, there's a huge contention about how the slave thing worked out. Many of them would have, for example, only one or two domestic slaves because you had an anti-religious bias as well as a racial bias. But unfortunately, the first time of St. Patrick's Day revolved, uh, they don't stand, as it were, with the exploited and the colonized and the oppressed. Uh, the Irish are on the wrong side, even if they are remembered as drivers who were less harsh than others. And now, a long, long time later, uh, when you have had a different history, and when, when we were there make, make a film making, in the Make a Film in 1985, September of 1985, what I was trying to do was to show how they had made different attempts to struggle against nature too, because you, you had a period in which people tried limes, uh, which is the great one, Montserrat and lime juice is the great source of uh, the English term limey, which lime juice given to the sailors so that they wouldn't get scurvy. And then in the upper class islands, in the summer, my lady always drinks lime juice and so on. So there was a period of limes, and, and but you are in the hurricane belt, belt all the time. And then there was a period of cotton, then there have been some of the most beautiful stamps ever produced in the world have been produced in Montserrat. The vegetation is very lush. And while one is living with the great active force of nature, uh, that is, say, uh, three to four million miles in creation, the volcano itself, uh, at the same time it makes possible a certain kind of ecology uh, that is very rich and lush. I found the... I know Antoine de Metz had written the history of the Catholic Church was there. The, the poet and historian of the island is Howard Fergus. And later on, uh, after the volcano, I tried to do some work with Archie Markham and some fundraising for poetry, for the poetry events to uh, deal with the hurricane. But the thing that struck me was the child-centered nature, too, of the culture. There is no child neglected in Montserrat in my time. And that is why they share something extraordinary with us here in Clare and everywhere, and there are more Montserratians living outside of Montserrat, and the same way as there are more Irish living outside Ireland. And the Montserratians who are outside look at their island, and uh, to, you would need to have a heart of stone to suggest that they wouldn't want it to recover, and we would need to have hearts of stone uh, not to think that we would want to be part of reconstructing the new millennium's relationship with the Caribbean. And our obvious point is to go to the place where before we had a mixed relationship, uh, Montserrat. And I certainly would love to be part of that. And I hope people mm -hmm. will respond to it. Uh, some Irish Telecom have been there already. There are skills we can do. There are houses that need to be rebuilt. There's a wonderful kind of uh, uh, history that can be done and cultural tourism, cultural history. There are also technical things that can be done. And of course, everyone will have heard of Mighty Arrow, you know, and people will have heard of recording and all sorts of new things in film uh, which would help assist the island reconstitute and restore itself. But it's the people I think mostly of, and I often thought of them afterwards. Particularly, I feel strongly that after Hurricane Hugo, uh, the ones who had to go to London uh, were not given enough uh, facilities uh, to be able uh, to keep in touch with what was happening and to create a sense of identity. And they're very distinguished Montserratians who've been mayors of some cities and towns in, uh, in England and they were part of British society, and that isn't the argument. In fact, it is one of the most fascinating arguments that if one goes to Montserrat, one should go to it to study it as a scholar, uh, to, it, to decide this issue of identity. Uh, people who must remember Africa, who looked in, as you will see from the structure of the dance, through the windows of the houses, and saw people doing quadrilles of whatever, and made their own movements, and with African feet, 
and instruments borrowed from different parts of the world and who for most of the history of the island had drums and the beating of drums forbidden and made their own tradition and music and were consciously choosing identity, listening to American music, British governor, an Irish connection, a, a, a people heading into the millennium. They, it actually can be a model of reconstruction of multicultural and wonderful and generous and human living and the thing to do is for people to go and walk on the black sands and visit Montserrat but come as quiet visitors and uh, uh, respect and, and uh, they won't find it difficult to love the Montserratian people in my view. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, will you do the introductions, please? Uh, I'm sorry, yes. I forgot about the decay. You may do that. <laughs> this is, this is Rudy, 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 Rudy Page, the yes. chief minister, is leading the delegation. How are you? Uh, Rudy, your name is David Brandt. David Brandt. Jim Fahey is Jim Fahey is the regional representative of the National Television and Broadcast. Right. Okay, so yes. uh, Tony Wade is the chairman of the Tony Brandt. Yes. Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Treasurer, 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 Treas
one of the areas which we want to develop is tourism, for example. And if you were to come to Mansur, it would be interesting. Apart from the fact of you seeing some history that could show you definite nexus to Ireland, it would help you as well. You'd be in a position to see an active volcano and in repose. And this is an experience that many will not have during their lifetime. And it is quite possible to view it from a safe point of view. We would want as well to build, if possible, some business connections. The Chamber of Commerce, we have here a representative of the Chamber of Commerce, with the Chamber of Commerce in Montserrat. I know that in Ireland you have, through your educational system, have developed this light industry. And it is possible for us to develop it, especially we are British dependent territory. And it may be that someone from Ireland might want to manufacture themselves. Um, to Europe. There is the credit union, for example, and we, I must use this opportunity to express my profound thanks to the Credit Union of Ireland because without being solicited, they gave one, over 100,000 US dollars to the Credit Union in Montserrat. And that may seem small to you, but it was of a great help. It is equivalent to millions of dollars to us people who have left their homes literally without the clothes on their backs and being living in shelters and have to start over again. I know of a couple, for example, who were in London and they built a home in Montserrat coming back to retire. And just before they were ready to retire, it went up in ashes. Nothing at all remained. The wife slept in the house one night on the floor. The husband never took a day off from work. He took buses in order to, when he's working in the country on the trains, because he wanted to save to come back home. And that has been lost, and that is the story of many of us. But we have this hope that it is possible, with the help of others, to start over again. We would not necessarily need handout. We want a hand up. We want to work in cooperation with others. And one of the things that is most interesting is that uh, maybe by providence, I've met uh, Mr. Higgins, and he, in speaking to him, it has brought out the importance of culture and this cultural connection. And that when, because our citizens are dispersed all over the world, I believe that the connection has to be some cultural connection. Because when a child goes to London and he's born in London or he's five years, he will totally forget about Montserrat. So there has to be something in order to make him remember. As Irish men in New York, you hear about the Irish in New York, the Irish in London, but they always remember their country. And that is why we are here today, to rebuild that kind of relationship. And we believe it can happen. We believe the Irish people um, have suffered like us, and it will be easy for them to identify with our situation. And we are here today. We are here to bring some of our musical styles, which we are told is similar to that. Um, we have the shamrock on the government house, and we understand that, um, that um, St. Patrick used that to teach the Trinity. And our national flag, there's a lady with a harp. And um, we understand that the Erin of Irish um, legend, um, who gave Ireland his second name, it's on that. So there's a permanent connection. We understand there are certain words. I, I was remembering a lady was telling me this morning that she was driving on a bus and the lady was said to, that you will kill him stone dead. And that <laughs> is a bloodshot <laughs> term. We use the word mm-hmm, uh-huh, for yes and no. So there is this real connection and we can identify each other. And I will invite all Irishmen and women to come to one shot as they came before. We started, I hope next year, that someone would lead a delegation to Montreal. Uh, Mike, can I ask you if uh, we should be really redoubling our efforts and getting stuck in and nationally, you know, becoming engaged in a much more active, proactive way with uh, Montserrat than we have been up to now? Oh, absolutely. And it's also part of something else because uh, part of the reconciliation and building of peace in our own island will mean we're going back uh, both before and through the 17th century 
it's part of the construction of memory. We, we, we gain from it uh, all the way in terms of what kind of connections did we have and why did we have one sort of connection rather than another. And then what is the meaning, if you're teaching history, to what is the meaning of indentured servant? How did, for example, if you're an indentured servant at the time of tobacco, uh, you could look forward to your freedom after five years or 15 years in some circumstances and with a five pounds and a piece of land. After sugar you got no land because the land was much more important now. And then that changed and that's our relationship with slavery, our relationship with colonialism, uh, the times when we were on the other side, the times when we were on the middle and so on. But much more interestingly about it is, is that uh, if you take names like that are on Montserrat, like Kinsale and you take uh, Corkill and Galway, Galway's, all of these, uh, these are people who deposited uh, uh, these names. Uh, you know, when we talk, for example, uh, about the tribes of Galway, the people should say, well, who were they and what did they do? And what kind of connections did they have, rather than they living in castles? Of course, we're also interested in who did they replace. So it's an intersection of two histories, and it is the finest and most civilizing kind of thing. But should we be doing more? Yes. The Taoiseach has been approached, I understand, and made aware of the connection yet again. Uh, but I have a sense of weariness to some extent, because the connection is now known. And I think that if people want to, they can look at the film, for example, that we made a long time ago, and uh, in 1988, that was shown in 1986, and contested, and we can debate about it and so on. There were many, I'm much less interested in the rows, but what I'm interested in now is, isn't it quite a, an exciting and wonderful thing if we just take the post-volcano situation and start engaging these stories. And the other side, which is just a small point I would say in taking over what the Chief Minister has said, is that what Montserrat has mostly looked for is technical assistance uh, in relation to, for example, the reconstruction communications, in relation to doing things where distance don't mean, doesn't mean a great deal in terms of transporting materials, software and something. If one good software company in Ireland went and established itself in Montserrat, it would make a huge difference. There's a, a recording tradition that is probably superb, one of the best in the world, that was there already. There are huge other things, there are beautiful visual things. As I said, the most lovely stamps in the world ever produced were produced there. It's an absolute wonderful place for bot, but bot in relation to the plant life and the peculiar ecosystem that the volcano has produced over a very long period of time. And all of this is, means that what, the, what I think is wonderful is that the Chief Minister and all of these Montserratians uh, are here. Uh, it's in a way, uh, a, they've come, as he says, uh, on their own pilgrimage. And we can begin to reflect on why so many of our people were there in different circumstances. Some choosing to be there <laughs> and having a good life. Uh, and others not choosing to be there, uh, and others finding themselves involved in situations that were not of their making. But the one thing we shouldn't do is forget. We should just put an end to the forgetting and get on now uh, with the remaking of our mutual histories in a mutually wonderfully exciting way. I, I think it's a great idea that we would have a connection with the Caribbean, uh, and they will in their own time decide their own future too, and we should be uh, part of assisting them at this stage to take possession again of their island. That's what I really feel is the most important. And we should have, perhaps in the short term, uh, build a good solid contact with the Montserratian community in London and places like that, and make, use our consular services to assist. Well, yes. Well, I, um, my name is Tony Wade, and I'm the chairman of the Montserrat Volcano Fund and we actually launched this initiative in that uh, it's wonderful to have our chief minister here he said the things that we believe but we believe that all monstrations do have a duty to respond to the call and the need that the island does face at the moment um, we are proud of our heritage the common heritage that we have with ireland and we're here really to do whatever we can to build that and um, to make sure now in my, in my way of thinking, the island has one of the best models to follow. And as our Chief Minister has said, our assets, our most valuable assets are our people. And what we would really like to do is to see some transferable skills on the one hand. Um, we would like, on the other hand, to encourage um, people to come and invest. We would also 
Um, our Director of Tourism is here, and I'm sure that she would like to tell you exactly how it can be done. But we want to build partnerships, we want to build relationships. We're not necessarily looking for handouts. If they come, well, we will welcome it. But most certainly, we want to build a relationship with all the people in Ireland and play our part in building what I would like to say is a better world for our generations to come. Here, here. Director of Tourism, I'd just like to say a few short words. Um, this is my first time to Ireland, and I hope this will not be my last. And I'm also hoping that not only will Montrachians come here, perhaps on an annual pilgrimage, but that people from Ireland will also come to Montserrat to learn about our common history. As the Chief Minister, as Mr. Higgins said, there's a common past between the two of us. And we, we want to cement that relationship and have people flowing both ways. Tourism isn't, isn't just about visiting another person's country. It's about learning about those people and understanding where they're coming from. And I think because we, serve, we, we share a similar background that this will help. And um, I'm hoping that people will empathize with the position that we're in because you have been through that. And we're hoping that you'll be able to empathize with us and come and visit Montserrat and help us in the rebuilding process. In general, I don't want to hold the mic. Go ahead. On behalf of the people of Montserrat, the government and people of Montserrat, we would like to present to you a token of our appreciation for your coming here and for inviting us to Ireland. This is a token of our volcanic situation. It doesn't spell disaster, but hope. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I, I, I might say that is, this is when the volcano was raging. Now it is in repose. Just to give you an idea of what it looked like at the time and why it caused all the damage it did. Yeah, yeah. Mr. B. Yeah. Okay, off you go. And in light of our tourism venture, we'd like to present to you some information which we hope will assist you in making your holiday plans, your next holiday plans in Montreal. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Right. Well, right. 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 Absolutely, right. go for it. Anything said it. Come on, cut the rest back. Okay, we're great.